Mr. Noel Gallagher, good morning. Hi. This is Jim Jim and Obby, your old pals again. Oh, your old muckers. <laughs> How you doing? We're sticking with the name. We're, we're good. How are you? I'm all right. So you should be. Why? Because your album is brilliant. Thank you very much. Now, um, I presume you know it's, it's good, but do you know how good it is? Um, I, it's, it's, you, you don't really find out until it comes out. You don't realise. Have we started this, by the way? We've started, yeah. Yes. All right, we started. <laughs> oh, yeah. You, <laughs> you don't really realise until, um, until you kind of start playing it live and what the reactions to the songs are. But, yeah, I mean, I, I, I thought, I think it's good or I wouldn't be putting it out, obviously. I it, think that when I... You're going to make a record. You have to make sure it's at least as equally as good as the one before it, which I think it is. And then if people are saying it's better than that, well, it's great, brilliant. We've know? been listening to your new album on a little private stream here, which is which is nice. But uh, there's a little bit where you can give feedback and you can rate a song. So we we send feedback back. Do you get a little ping on your phone to say someone has reviewed your album? <laughs> I can just imagine you two sitting by a little stream with fishing rods, <laughs> yeah, listening, listening to uh, like two little leprechauns listening to my album. <laughs> That's a, that's a, that's, 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 that's the name is that won't go away now for the rest of the day. Be Gary Nobby, that's another good one. Oh, that's it? a great Noel. Oh, oh sure. That Noel Felly knows he's that. Uh, Riverman is a great, <laughs> it's a great opening to an old album there. He's really, he caught my attention straight away. I never liked the other fella. What was his name? Ah, Liam, was Liam, it? he didn't, he, no, was, no. he was holding him back. Noel was always the great. Noel was the talent. <laughs> Oh dear, that's probably ruined my entire afternoon. <laughs> I'm going to lie down, I think. <laughs> no, really, um, just like the leprechauns were saying there, the, the river man, you, just from the very get-go, you're just like, oh, oh we're in good hands here. This is yeah, this yeah. Is... Well, yeah. I mean, I just, what can I say? I don't know. It's um, that was one of the last songs that I I I recorded for the record, and it came out so so well. I was quite amazed because it started off as that that song started off life as a different kind of thing altogether, and. Uh, it kind of developed in the studio, and um, I had a bit of a eureka moment when um, I was recording it, and, and completely changed the style of it at the last minute. And um, yeah, it's a great opening track, and it kind of introduces the uh, the dreaded saxophone early on. Don't uh, don't dread the saxophone. Respect the sax. Yeah, well, I respect I respect <laughs> I respect the sax, but you know, other people might not. I think for me, the dying of the light. Which will be track five for everyone, unless you change things around. That yes. is, uh, that's the song for me. Yeah, oh, thanks, man. That's one of my that's one of my favourite songs I've ever written. I think. As as I said to Jim, we were listening to it, and he was impressed by my quote. I said, uh, "It's like listening to the soundtrack of my teenage years." Oh, good on you. Thank you very much. It also passes the car test and the walking test. This album. It, right. It, yeah. So you know, just when you when you're driving around, it just it it works very well. Ah. Oh. Thank you very much. You should write my biog. Well, yeah, we should. Oh. The, the only negative I, I, I could probably say about the album is uh, the, the cover photograph looks like the wall that you're standing in front of. That looks like the basement in the Queen Vic. <laughs> <laughs> it does look like Where people thing. have been buried under the floor. <laughs> right. Right. It's actually a fake wall. Believe it or not, oh. that is a fake wall. Um, I had an idea for, for the cover, which... Uh, 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 and we had to get fake. Look, uh, that's not. That's not. They're not real bricks. I'm sorry about that. But um, <laughs> the cover. Yeah. Okay. So you can edit this bit out. Somebody said to me, "What are you doing on the cover, looking like a f***ing angry?" <laughs> <laughs> and I said, "Well, it was the kind of thing I was going for. And saxophones and <laughs> is where it's f***ing at." <laughs> if you if you can guess the bit that was beeped that Noel said, what yeah. it's called, you can win a strawberry lamp black cuddle mug. <laughs> Well, it's better than looking like a happy. Uh, well, indeed, which is what most <laughs> look like, is it not? Particularly on a Sunday morning. No. The photographer's like, "Come on, give me more anger." Of course, they're happy. They don't pay tax. <laughs> For the first four bars, I think it's a nod to yourself as well, in that it sounds a little bit like the start of Master Plan. Indeed, yeah. I mean, I don't, you know, listen. When I'm when I'm making when I'm making records, I don't really overthink yeah. things like that too much because I think you're not really you're not really following your instincts and. Um, I just, you know, a, a, a great song is a great song is a great song, and that's it, really. But yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of nods to my influences on everything that I've ever done. I think. Well, but the, but the right stuff, that that's that sounds a little French, doesn't it? There's a little, there's a little bonjour, Mister Gallagher, going on there. Indeed, yeah. It, I best, I guess that if somebody, that's about as far removed as supersonic as you're going to get. <laughs> yeah. uh, I would have liked to. It would. It was the one track that when I was recording, I was thinking. I would like to. I would like to be in Oasis just to run this by Liam. 
Right. That would be an interesting. That would be an interesting afternoon. He's playing Liam the demo for that. But could you not just play it to him down the phone? Oh uh, no! But me saying to him, you have to sing this. Right. Oh. It would rile him. What does he think of it? Has he heard it? He probably secret. No, I don't know. I don't think he know. He wouldn't have heard it yet. He's He'll probably prob- filling out the reviews on the stream. He probably would secret. Oh, we'll find out soon enough through his Twitter account. I would have thought so. <laughs> you know. Is that how you communicate these days? I, I'm not on Twitter, but that's how he communicates with the outside world out there. Right. Yeah. I, I read recently that, uh, quite recently, in fact, you said that the only reason you'll be getting back as Oasis is for the money. Yeah. Is it that much of a commodity to you these days? No, but it's the only reason I do it. What, what would I do it for? What, for, for? For pleasure. For, for all the, for all the I fans. Get, to make I the get, fans happy. I get, uh, um, I, get, uh, <laughs> I get enough pleasure in my life without kind of uh, without looking back too much. But if somebody was to offer me a ridiculous amount of money, I would go, mm, well, maybe then. And Cre- creatively, yeah. as you've been finding out, sitting by the river with your little <laughs> fishing rods, I don't, I don't, creatively, I don't need it. No, no. Professionally, I don't need it. Financially, I don't need it. But, you know... Uh, you never look a gift horse in the mouth, particularly so, if it's got half a billion dollars in it. <laughs> in our fishing, if our fishing tackle bag has a blank check, I mean, are we talking half a billion? Do we a have blank to write? check. Now that's the kind of that's my kind of money is the blank check. It'll probably fill bounce. It, fill it in yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, well, it's not ruled out. That's the that's the main. Well, thing. no, you can never rule anything out because you never know what might. I mean, they might have an amazing change of heart in five years' time. I don't know, but mm. if somebody now. I don't see it, but if somebody was to walk in here with a whole doll full of, you know, thousand dollar bills and there'd be like a quarter of a billion of them, I would probably say, you know what, Let's I'll give time. it a shot. Yeah. When, uh, when we meet people, the number one question we always get asked is what time do we get up at? Is, is that the question that you are really sick of getting asked, by the way, the one we just asked? Well, what time do you get up at? No. <laughs> in a roundabout way, didn't we? We didn't, we didn't even ask them straight out. We didn't have the guts to straight out Does ask Does it ever them. get annoying? No. My <laughs> wife always says that to me after she's come back from the school run. What time did you get up? <laughs> Oh, I don't know, quarter to ten or something uh, early, you know. Um, uh, I do get asked in every interview, so that I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel too bad about it if I was you. Okay, okay. Now we want to ask you about Ed Sheeran, though. Now, yeah. Is it true that he texted you and sent you to send no, you tickets? Yeah, we're, I, we're friends, right? right. And uh, that the whole that whole thing come about. I was I was bemoaning the state of rock music and how, you know, uh, and how you know, these pop stars now, and his name inadvertently got dragged <laughs> into it. Right? And, uh, this is worse than him, you know. Uh, oh, God, James Blunt, f*** <laughs> me. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, I, I, so his name I, I inadvertently got dragged into it. But no, I, I, we we have each other's number because when I was doing uh, curating the Teenage Cancer Trust thing, yeah. I got him to do the... Um, I got him to do the gigs for me, and I will say this about him: when you do things like that, you kind of call artists up regularly. You kind of always fob you off by saying, "Oh, I can't do it this year, but call me next year. Mm. I'll definitely do it." He 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 did that to me one year, and um, he's the only artist in my entire experience of working with the TCT that's ever called me back and said, "You know what? I'm ready to do it now." And he was true to his word, and he's a he's a good lad, you it's know, okay. and all that. But um, yeah, he texted me and said. Um, I think he asked me to get up with him at, Wem- at Wembley. That's <laughs> like you cheeky. F- <laughs> and, uh, but I said uh, my daughter will come uh, and she'll have a massive high flying birds banner. So you know. You, would you go with her? Oh, I'm not going. No. Good lord, no. <laughs> <laughs> Heavens above. No, no, no. Heavens I'll above. be quaffing champagne with Bono in the south of France. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, you did mention the last time we spoke to you that your daughter's a big fan of One Direction. So I presume if you do slag off Ed Sheeran, does she kick your ass or? Uh, yeah, I guess she gets mildly embarrassed, but you know, all dads are supposed to mildly embarrass their teenage daughters, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, but if you can bring her to Wembley and say, "Hey, here's a oh, she's going. Oh, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. She'll be in a box." I mean, I presume when your dad is Noel Gallagher, it's backstage passes all the way. Absolutely, you know, she'll be there with a, you know, a bottle of Iron Brew. Having it, having it. Vintage, vintage iron brew. You were seen recently with a bottle of beer in your hand. Is it true that the, some beer company offered you a lifetime supply? Yes. No, we were up in Scotland at the weekend. It's a friend of ours. It was her fortieth birthday, and uh, we, we were, I mean, why we why why we went to Scotland is beyond me. Because <laughs> nobody in there, apart from my wife, is Scottish, um, and uh, they were they were serving uh, tenants behind the bar, mm. and uh, I did I did manage to get my photograph taken with a pint of tenants at some ridiculous hour. But tenants have offered me a lifetime supply, and 
uh, hotline should it ever run out. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Who's got the, who's at the end of the hotline? I wonder. Uh, it'll be some it'll be some guy in an Oasis T-shirt who's just waiting, <laughs> just waiting for the phone to ring, me to just do a big burp and say that was the last of it. So <laughs> can I get some, some more? more? Over. Are you going to say yes to this offer? Or, well, if you don't want it, can we have it? No, I'm, I'm having You're it. You're having it. Tenants. I'm having it. Yeah, it's not as good as the Guinness, but it's all right. Let me tell you. Um, Particularly when it's free <laughs> for life. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what happens in this kind of downtime? Album's done. You're waiting for the release. Is it just interview after interview? Or no, I'm I'm rehearsing. Uh, I'm rehearsing five days a week, and then. The weekends I don't do nothing. One of my kids have had chicken pox at the minute, so we're mm. in a bit of a sick house, like a World War One hospital at the minute. Um, did you have that as, as a young boy? Did you have chicken pox yourself? Were you immune? Uh, I didn't get it until I was a teenager. Right. So I got I got the the adult strain, which was called shingles. Yeah, you Ooh. can get that a few times, can't you? Oh. I bet you don't get asked this in interviews too often. Uh, I don't too often, no, particularly not, not by Japanese. They wouldn't know what shingle was. They? <laughs> I think it was. So tell me about your new shingle. <laughs> <laughs> Who plays guitar that solo? Is that you and Riverman? Um, I am going to say yes, <laughs> but in all honesty, no. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like Carlos Santana. It's amazing. Yeah, it's uh, it's yeah, it is it's it's no loss Santana. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, no, it's a, it's a, it's the engineer who engineered the record. He okay. just happens to be a fantastic guitarist, and, and it got to the, the guitar break. And what I was playing, I didn't like, I hated it. And uh, he said, "Well, what kind of thing? Do you, what are you hearing?" And I was just hearing, you know, something astonishing. And he kind of, we kind of worked it out together. And he's a better guitarist than I am, so you know. Did he volunteer to do it or? He didn't volunteer initially, no. <laughs> I made him do it. I made him do it, yeah. And I would have him on tour with me doing it, but unfortunately, he looks like a... And you can beep that bit too. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I think yeah. we will, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it went from Carlos no, no, Santana no. to... The one easy move. Noel Gallagher is an equal opportunities employer. <laughs> this whole interview is going to have a lot of leaps, actually. Um, uh, well, the album is absolutely uh, brilliant, and we're not just blowing smoke up, whatever it is. What is that expression? Blowing up smoke. Jaxi, smoke who? Up blowing up smoke up the outlet. Yeah, uh, it really is. It's, it's fantastic, and uh, really looking forward to seeing it live uh, in the Three Arena. Thank you very much. Good luck to the people who are entering the competition for the sound check party. My sound check parties are legendary uh, for their indifference towards the people who are there. Do you, do you acknowledge them at all? No. You do. I do. Well, whoever wins, when they come and watch a band sound check, just, there's just one rule don't clap <laughs> after the songs because it's quite pathetic when you're in an arena that holds 11,000 people and there's three people clapping. Right, okay. You're just like, well, thanks very much. Should they nod? No, they should just keep out, just keep out of the way, and at the end, just go. Where's Liam? <laughs> well, <everyone else> <laughs> <laughs> so that's your number one heckle, yeah. <laughs> I, I get it on the tube when I I get the tube most days to where I to where I rehearse, and uh, I kind of usually get away with it. But the 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 uh, one of the most um, one of the things that happens quite regularly is some guy will look down the carriage and see you, and they see you and go. Liam! <laughs> Liam! <laughs> and you're kind of sitting there messing with your phone thinking, do I acknowledge it? I have to acknowledge it because he obviously has got the, you know, there's a case of mistaken identity and I have to kind of look over and give him a fist bump and go, <laughs> all right, all right, all right. You yeah, see, man. if you got yourself driving lessons, I know we've been here before, then you wouldn't have to put up with that. Mm. Yeah, but every time I think to myself, right, I'm gonna. I'm gonna, the next time I get a few weeks off, I'm gonna do it. Something always happens to me in the back of a taxi where I think I would have killed that bloke just there. I would have got out and I would have smashed his car with a sledgehammer. <laughs> so I'm thinking it's probably like the Twitter account which I'll never open. It's probably best left unused. Do you know what I mean? There's no need. Uh, I can tweet something for you now if you want. If you want to say something to me, I'll, I'll tweet it on your behalf. You tweet it on my behalf. Yeah. Um... A message from No. He says, "I what I would say to the people of Ireland is this. Ray, what am I going to say to the people of Ireland? Ray's from Ireland. What am yeah. I going to say to the people of Ireland? What's your well, statement? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Do I say what the Pope said? Pope John Paul, yeah, 1979. Yeah. He said, he said young, young, people of, young people of Ireland, I love you.' Brilliant. It yeah. went, went down the storm for him, so I'm sure that'll do very well on Twitter for you. Yes. Buy my new rosary beads. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Noel. Thank you." That's brilliant. Fair play to you. See you soon.
See you soon. Thanks a million. Bye. That's great. Bye-bye. The Strawberry Alarm Clock on FM 104.